Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Nasta'inahu wa nasta'fir Ashar wa la ilaha illallah Wahduhu la sharikala Lahu al-mukhu lahu al-ham Wa huwa likudli shayin kadir Wa ashadu anna muhammadan wa abduhu wa rasuluh We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Highly glorified is he The merciful benefactor The merciful redeemer we ask him for his guidance, we seek his forgiveness. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah, the seal of the prophets, and the recipient of the final revelation to humanity, the Quran Quran. In the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives us a picture of the first family of our father Adam and his wife Hawa. And the picture that he gives us is aptly called a garden. And he shows us an idyllic scene where there is peace, there is tranquility, there is all of the sustenance, Allah says, they had no need for going hungry. There was peace and tranquility. If we fast forward to the time that we live in now, it begs the question, what happened to the environment? We live in a time and in a circumstance where there is increasing teen suicide, where there is mass shootings of children, of kids killing each other, growing homelessness, and family breakups spiraling out of control. In Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah says that we are supposed to look at this as the, the, the opening, as the key to the book. We say something repeatedly, and the ayah that we are focusing on right now is Iddina Surat al Mustaqim. O oh Allah, show us the straight way. As Muslims, we don't have a lock on this, we can't patent it, we can't say that it's exclusively for us. Any human being that is seeking God's guidance sincerely, any human being that is looking for how to get themselves on the straight path and to avoid all of the destructive things that they see in the society has to be calling out saying, show us the straight way. Show us how to get back on track. Show us how to get a grip on our moral compass. It then our sirat. Show us the straight way. I don't think it's a coincidence that the very next chapter, Surat al-Baqarah, it starts with Alif Lam Mim. Dhalika al-kitab al-rayba fi hudal al-butakim. Here is that book. Here is that guidance. Here is the information that you have been seeking. Allah allows us to know something of him as he reveals through the Quran his 99 attributes. And one of those beautiful attributes we want to reflect on today, it's called Al-Wadud. Now I have seen it translated and perhaps you have too, is simply love. But I want to tell you that Al-Wudu doesn't simply mean love. It means the source of love. It means that one from which love emanates. It means that Allah is the creator of love. It means that all of those 60s and 70s tapes that we have about love wouldn't exist if Allah had not gave us this attribute of Al-Wudu. We would have no way to turn to our mother or our father and say, I love you. It wouldn't be in our vocabulary. We wouldn't be able to hug our children and say, I love you. It wouldn't be in our vocabulary. Allah has given us access to a way to understand how to comprehend love. He is the source of it, al wudu In the culture that we live in now, we have women who are looking for unrealistic knights on horses. Or I guess a white horse has been replaced with a white Lexus. And she's waiting for him to come and sweep her off her feet and they're gonna live happily ever after with neon signs flashing in the background. 
And the society has men looking for women that are actually a clone of the man's ego. Brother, tell another brother, man, I met this sister and, you know, she likes the Lakers and I like the Lakers and I like pizza and she likes pizza. Man, I think we got chemistry going here. When we look at the language that is pervasive in the society, we have things that actually desensitize us as human beings. Things that allow us to actually skip over or to weaken or to actually avoid even having empathy for anybody else. We have lost our sensitivity for suffering in the society. We see someone on the ground that's falling over, we just step over them or go around them. Don't even want to stop and give them a hand. The words that we have that have permeated our thinking this is the dog-eat-dog -dog world. Step on others before they step on you. Good guys come in last. All of those things desensitize us and take us away from our capacity to actually show love for one another. If you got one of the phones that recently came out, it's not a you phone. It's not a they phone. It's an I phone. It's about I. You don't have a we pad or an us pad. You have an iPad. This is me. I. It's about me. Want to see a great movie? You go to the IMAX. And we've gotten down to the point now where we don't even want nobody else to get no credit for nothing because when we take a picture, we take a selfie. It's all about me. These concepts rob us of our capacity or our ability to be sensitive to others and to actually show love. The news media floods us with information that overloads our senses. You tell me one person died down the street, I may be able to empathize or sympathize with the loss of that family. But you tell me a thousand people died today, I have no capacity to actually get my mind wrapped around that. Short-changing, short-circuiting our sensitivities. Allah tells us in the Quran, I created you as nations and tribes that you may know each other. And the word he uses there is lita arafu. And arafu or arafa means to know. But it doesn't mean that I just take out my business card and hand it to you and you give me your. It means that I have an exchange with you where I understand where you're coming from, what you've been through. And I have the capacity to shut my ego down today and let you talk to me so that you can vent. I can, I, I can be the listener this time. But when you stop having the ability to love people, all of those things go away. Love starts off as a noun. It transitions to a verb. And then it reaches its fullest expression as an adverb. It starts off as a person, place, a thing, as a noun. Something inside of me. I got this feeling of this emotion of love, but it just sits there inside of me. It does not become a verb. It does not get outside of me until I act on it and begin showing it to someone else. And then a beautiful thing happens when I move the love outside of me and out of my mind and out of my feelings and my sensations and emotions. When I engage with another person, it modifies them and it modifies me. It helps me become a better person, a better human being. Allah is the source of love, al wudu Allah shows us his love. I was really struck by watching some film on one of these satellites they sent into space. And it started off where you could see the earth kind of big. And the further away it got, the earth got smaller and smaller. And then finally, it was a single dot of light. And then finally, you couldn't see it at all. And I was struck by the fact that throughout all of the stars and all of the moons and all of the suns and all of the galaxies and all of the universes, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned about us on this little bitty speck of dirt sitting somewhere in the universe to the point that he gave us a sun that doesn't burn us up. He created us and made us dependent on air and surrounded the planet with air for us to breathe. He made us dependent on water and he gave us so much water we can't even get rid of it. We just managed to pollute it, but we can't get rid of it. He cares so much about us. Inside of our human body are two systems, one called a voluntary and the other called involuntary nervous system. And knowing the nature that he created us in, 
how forgetful we are. He says that was the problem with Father Adam. He was forgetful. He doesn't give us the responsibility to make our kidneys do what they're supposed to do or our liver do what it's supposed to do. He has an involuntary system inside of us that is clocked and he is controlling it. We might forget to tell our heart to beat and have cardiac arrest. <laughs> Look how much he loves us. Allah loves us so much. And we can see how he loves his creation. He sends the sun to shine and it don't just shine on the, on the flowers and, and, and the weeds don't get no sunshine. It shines on the flower and the He sends the rain and it doesn't just come down on the righteous people. We don't see a cloud of rain just following the believers around and the disbelievers don't have nothing. They're in a desert. What he's showing us, the message he's sending to us, is that his love is equally accessed by his creation and it is a love that is unconditional. You don't have to do nothing in particular to get God's love. You can be an atheist and he will still wake you up in the morning. That's a, he's showing us, Al Wudud is teaching us about the proper way that we should love. Most of us don't know how to love, and I'm going to come to our defense. We didn't have no practice. We haven't had any practice. Anything you want to get good at, we practice at it. You might see some of them youngsters on one of these dilapidated parks shooting a ball almost midnight. You got to call him to come in the house. He's practicing. He has dreams of being in the NBA. You see someone knocking the ball over and over again. He's practicing because he wants to get good at it. Anything we want to be good at or proficient at, we practice it. But when did we practice love? What is our example? Al Wudu, the source of love. They have a concept that I've heard recently, and it's called best practice. And what it means is used mostly in corporate America. What best practice tends to mean is that you take all of the information that's available and all of the research that has been done and all of the things that people have tried in order to affect something in particular, and you distill that down to what is the best way to do it. al wudud is the source for the best practice of how to love. I want to just throw in a little something here for sisters. Any sister that is looking for a brother, she's looking for a mate, looking to complete her dean, and she has met someone and she thinks this might be the person, I want her to put something on her checklist to give to her wali. The brother then told her sister that he loved her. I want her to put this, call your wali, talk to him, tell him, say, add this to the checklist, wali. Ask that brother, where did he get his experience at love? Does he love his mother? Does he love his siblings? Has he found a way to express his love in a positive way in his community? Before I accept that he loves me, where did he get his experience from? You don't want no amateur in your life, sister. His complaint when things go bad is <laughs> maybe, well, you know, I, I, I never had a chance to practice this love thing. Well, in the beginning, check him out and see if he has practiced what he has seen of Al Wudud. And brothers, I ain't gonna leave us out. Don't be shy, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to admit that without looking at the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Al Wudud, we don't have a clue of how to love somebody. Stumbling in the dark. Sister taking a chance. Sister, I love you. She taking a chance. We don't know nothing about it except what we heard in a love song or what we seen in a love movie or what we read in a love novel. Or God forbid what our friends told us love's supposed to be. We actually have young girls in horrible relationships, abusive relationships, looking for the love that they never got because their parents never found what Al Wudud had for them as a lesson for love. We have young men on street corners Gang bangers got him because they told him, I'm your family, because the young man never got in his house the love he's looking for from these gang members. Now, I chose the title for this cookbook today, What's Love Got to Do With? <laughs> when it comes to marital relationships, Allah tells us in Surah Al Rum, chapter 30 of the Quran, and in the 21st ayah, He tells us that He is the one that puts love in the hearts of the believers. Love in the hearts for the husband and the wife. He says, and among his signs is this, that he created you 
from mates and from among yourselves. Now listen at this carefully. That ye may dwell in tranquility. He's telling us, I'm the one that put love in the heart for the man, for the woman, and there is a reason why I did it. So you can have tranquility. So you can have a semblance of that first garden experience where you can have peace and tranquility. He's not saying I'm giving you a rose garden. He's saying that if a rose gets bumpy, at least both of y'all will be there together to support each other. So he says, among yourselves that you may dwell in tranquility with them, and he, Allah, has put love and mercy between your hearts. Sadaqallah wa The test of a relationship is do you have in your heart what emanates from al-wudu. Again, it's in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3 of the Quran, in ayah 31. Allah tells us again how to address love. He says, O Messenger, tell the people, if indeed you love Allah, follow me. And Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. Sadaq Allah So we are being told, if you really love Allah, I mean, you know, that, that word is all over the place. You know, I love my car, I love your hair, I love these shoes, I love that suit. We, I, we, we just love everything, poor thing. We just love everything. But Allah says, he's putting us to the test. If you indeed love Allah, then follow Prophet Muhammad. Allah says of him, In the Messenger of Allah, you have the most excellent example for any that seeks to please Allah and reach the hereafter. Allah calls him the Qairodayan, the excellent caller to the faith, by his example. If we want Allah to love us, he tells us in the Quran, he said, Allah loves those who turn to him constantly, not every now and then. You know how we do. Things going bad, no job, no money, rent due. Wife looking at you, I thought you was the man. She didn't memorize one section of the Quran. She don't know nothing else out of the Quran except this one section that says, men are the providers, protectors, and maintainers of women. She know that one by heart. <laughs> And she remind you of that every single day. And you down on your knees, tears dripping on the prayer rug, oh Allah, oh Allah. And then Allah responds to us and brings something to relieve our circumstances. And we forget about that. Allah says he loves those who are constant. He says he loves those who act right, who do what is proper, what is right. We have a moral compass inside of us that is supposed to whisper to us, that's not right right there. He said he loves those who put their trust in him and those who are kind. What's love got to do with it? Have you ever noticed how when you love somebody, you talk to them differently than you talk to other people? Mm -hmm. I remember when I was small and I had a little group of people that I called my friends and my mother called them thugs. And we used to practice using language that we had heard behind the pool hall and stuff like that. And we would compete with each other with these vulgar words and stuff like that. But the thing that I noticed is every time our mothers came around, we spoke perfect English and stood up straight. So I knew that that wasn't the natural habitat for us. That wasn't the natural form for us. And we were doing it because not just that we respected our mothers, but we loved them. There's a hadith where Prophet Muhammad wasalam, says, none of you is truly a believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. We know that hadith backward and forward. But I want to draw your attention to something in particular. It says none of you are truly. He didn't say you wasn't a believer. He said you're not truly a believer. You're a believer. I mean, you got the love. It's in you. It's a concept. It's a feeling that you got. But you haven't carried it from the noun to the verb stage, so you're not truly a believer. You haven't acted on it yet. We can't say you're not a believer. That's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you haven't demonstrated, we can say you're not truly a believer. It hasn't reached the surface yet. And in this particular hadith, we find a connection between belief and love connected together. So dear Muslims, dear brother and sister, let us reflect on this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-wudu. Not just love, but the source of love. The one from whom love emanates. The one that we should try to emulate, emulate as we look throughout the creation and see how he shows his love for us and for the creation. 
and then to take that to heart and make it a part of our behavior and our conduct. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, the Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salama ala kayyar or mursaleen, Muhammad al Nabi Umi wa ala ali was sabi echmaeen. I want to share with you a very powerful statement that's found in scripture. And we have various versions of it in Quran and in Hadith and in the Sunnah. But I like the particular wording that is expressed in the Injil. And it's an invitation, and it says, Love ye one another like God first loved you. There's so much healing in this statement. Love you one another like God first loved you. It's not talking about there's a line of people here and God reaches over them and he loves you first. It's talking about our first stages of development. It's talking about our, uh, our, 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 our basic start, rudimentary, evolutionary process. It's talking about us before we started looking the way we look. He's saying, you have to learn how to love each other like God first loved you. Allah loved us when we were a sperm cell. Allah loved us when we were a blood clot, a clot of congealed blood. Allah loved us. We didn't have any great value at that point. Allah loved us at that point. And it just tickled my imagination and I thought, oh my God. Everything that is alive has to eat, to consume. It has to have nourishment. Who would know how to determine what is the food for a blood clot? Who would discover where the mouth is and be able to put it in there and feed it, except one who was all-knowing and all-powerful and who loved it very much? Allah loved us before we could stand up straight when we were wobbling. Allah loved us before we knew how to have intelligent speech. Allah loved us in our very rudimentary, elementary stages. And he's telling us we should love each other like that. Sometimes we act like we got a stack of love and we pass it out as we see fit. People have to meet a certain standard. You, you know, okay, well, you know al I'm going to give you a little bit of love now, but I'm going to hold the rest of this back until you meet my standard of what qualifies you to get love from me. Forgetting that Al-Wadud is the owner of the love and the one that it comes from. He says, you should love one another like God first loved us. Some of our youth are feeling so cut off because of their generation and what they're doing. You know, we still have to love them. They belong to us. That's our future. We have to love them when their pants are sagging, but love them enough to tell them you should be more dignified than that. We have to love them when they're blasting vulgar words to a hip hop song and tell them you can be better than that. And when we hear them curse, not act like the day of judgment just came, oh my God. Mm -hmm. We have to love them enough to nurture them and encourage them toward their best self, but not cut them off. You need to love one another like God first loved us. How dare we say we love our children, but we don't connect them with our wudu. Just tickle their imagination, tell them, you know, there's a source of love. The reason why I cook food for you every day ain't because I'm trying to open a restaurant somewhere, son. It's because I love you. The reason why I do your laundry it's not because I expect for you to pay me back when you get grown. It's because I love you. The reason why the father is working 12 hours a day on a job putting money away for the college fund for a son that's out in the street somewhere is because he loves him enough that he believes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him back. He says, love you one another like God first loved you. There's a hadith where it says that when Allah loves someone, he tells Jibreel, I love so-and-so. And Jibreel don't keep it to himself. Jibreel calls the angels and say, guess what? Allah loves so-and-so. And the angels don't keep it a secret in heaven. It says that Allah dispatches them down on the earth. Imagine when Allah says, I love you. It goes through the heavens, through the angels, and comes down to us. And he causes people to love us. 
I've seen love. I've seen love when I've seen a mother go in the closet and take all of the clothes of her children that have already outgrown them and give them to another woman whose children don't have any clothes. I've seen love. I remember and I lived through a time that some of you may recollect when a brother would call another brother that he didn't see at the mosque. And he didn't call him to gossip and he didn't call him to chew him out. He called him just to make sure he was all right. Brother, I don't want to hear no excuses. You don't have to explain nothing to me. I'm calling you because I love you and I didn't see you and I miss you. I've seen love where two sisters will call each other not to gossip, not to start fitting up. Not to hear what is the latest thing going on in the masjid or in the center with this sister, that sister. Calling each other, sister, I miss seeing you. And I just want to know if everything is all right. I've seen love. I've seen love when my mother would cook enough food each evening, more than we needed, to carry it next door to see if the neighbors needed something. I've seen love. And I've seen love when a husband and wife are on the brink of divorce. And instead of going all through the community, him telling all the brothers how terrible she is, she telling all the sisters how horrible he treating her, instead of all of this backbiting and all of this fitting up, they come together, forgive each other, make wudu, and get on the prayer rug, and go to al wudu, and say, oh Allah, please restore to us that love that we started our relationship with. So what's love got to do with it? Everything. We pray for the souls of the faithful and departed that Allah will grant us a peaceful rest in Jannah. We pray for the sick, the dying, and the destitute. He will ease their suffering and ease their pains. We ask the choicest blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on his companions, on his progeny, and all the prophets. We ask Allah to endear to our heart the Quran Kareem. We ask Allah to expand for us our desire and our thirst and our appetite to utilize the attributes of Allah to improve the condition of our life and our communities and our societies. And we beseech al wudu O oh Allah, the source of love, please increase in us a love and the capacity to love each other and ourselves. I mean, Ikama. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Shadu Allah,